Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to Live from Legacy again. What a privilege it is to welcome you from the incredible Legacy Pavilion Theater on behalf of Morris and Teresa Strollo. I just want to tell you how much we love you, how much we thank God for what he is doing through these Facebook Live ministry impartations. That's right. You're not just watching a social media page. You and I are connecting with the anointing of God, just like Elisha, when Elijah said, if you see me when I am gone, you will be a candidate for the double portion. Is there anybody that will join me as I'm standing here in the Morris Cirillo Legacy Pavilion Theater in saying, God, here's my hand. It's raised up like Elisha's, count me in. I am a candidate. I need the double portion. You know why we need that double portion today? And I tell you what, we are going to go direct to Earl's Court, London. You are going to receive an impartation today. One of the great classic breakthrough miracle messages that you will ever hear in your life. Brother Cirillo, under an incredible anointing, preaches the amazing story of the woman with the issue of blood. How many today have an issue in your life that you are saying, I am ready to press through this Facebook crowd. I'm ready to press through the 1,500,000 followers on the Morris Cirillo Facebook page and touch the hem of Jesus garment. I believe somebody today is going to get the attention of Jesus because you're going to do something. And I want to encourage you today. Faith is a fact, but faith is also an act. And I know if you're on this page, you're not on this page to spectate, but you're saying like I'm saying every day, God, here am I. God, download into my life a double portion. Why? So that I can be doubly blessed? No so that I can be a double blessing. Somebody say God wants to use my life in a greater way. And yes, you will be doubly blessed. Yes, God will bless you. He'll get it to you if he knows he can get it through you. Well, it is an honor today. I am super excited. I feel goosebumps on my arms right now for the power of God that is getting ready, that's already being released on this Facebook Live from this incredible theater today, this incredible Legacy Center grounds. There is excitement in the air. There is electricity in the air today. Many, many local San Diego pastors were our guests on this campus. This place is getting ready to be born. A dream is coming to pass. And I declare that your dreams have not been forgotten. Your dreams are coming to pass. The Bible says until the time came to fulfill Joseph's dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. And my brother, my sister, just like Morris and Teresa, went through an incredible test and then another test. I want you to know something. God has seen your faithfulness. God has seen you come through one test after another. And I declare to you that your dream is about to be fulfilled. Do not be weary in well-doing. And that's what we're doing today. For this is our due season to reap. I believe there is a woman. I believe there is a man like this incredible woman that Brother Shiloh is going to minister to us about today that is going to hear a message that is going to believe God is who he says he is and then is going to do something about it. Before we go to the message, I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to show you some of the miracles that happened in Earl's Court. Deaf ears being opened, arthritis being healed, amazing miracle working power of God. I want you just for a few minutes to take a look at this. Her left ear, she could never hear out of it clearly, and all of a sudden she said the night she hears out of both ears clearly. She was amazed. She was thrilled at the Lord. It came from the Philippines. How, how long have you had this deaf ear? Uh, 
it was my childhood. I was learning how to swim, and the water got into my ear. And since then, I didn't even realize it. How long ago was it? Um, probably I was about 10 or 8 years old. No, I was about 10 or 8 years old. How and that must be about 30 odd years ago. So it's over 30 years ago. Yeah. You've been to the doctors? I've been to the doctors about six, seven years ago. And they said they can't do anything with my left ear because it happens a long, long time. So they can't do anything about it anymore. But when I was there sitting, I, I stood up first because I know I had pain in my shoulders. And the usher, she saw me putting my hand on my shoulders. And she asked me to stand up. I said, don't be shy. So I stood up. And I was able to lift my hand for quite a long time. And then I sat down. And all of a sudden, I, I didn't know what happened, but I just put my hand on my left e my right ear. And all of a sudden, I can hear you as much as I can hear in my right ear. And I said, no. Oh, somebody shout. This, this lady has been dampened this year for 50 years. 50? 50. Come over here, Violet. 50 years? 50 years, yes. What happened tonight? I had a, an operation 50 years ago. To put, put, put your hand, watch it. What, what, it what, the power. Let Whoa, let it go. The power is all over her. 50 years. Violet, yeah. turn around. Put your finger in this ear. Death for 50. Praise the Lord. Say amen. For he... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Five. <laughs> watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her, watch her. When I was born, I had asthma. And for, I've been using this inhaler. And Where's the inhaler? It's at home. It's at home. You bring it to me tomorrow night, would you? Yes. Okay. And, and what, what happened tonight? I was, I was praying. Uh, I put my hands up. I was praying about my asthma. I put my hand to my throat, and it just went. It just went. <laughs> put your hands up and give God for Put your hands. Father, I pray for you. Oh, yes, I praise you. I praise you. Come on, what, no. what church are you from? I c come from a church in Seaford in Sussex. What kind? Baptist church. It works for Baptists. Yeah. Come on over here. Well, tell us about the arthritis. Well, for four years, I've suffered with arthritis. I had a little bit of movement, but not a lot in my hands, my legs, or anything. And now I just feel so great, and praise the Lord, I can move my fingers, my legs, and everything. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise God. Who, who did this for you? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Yeah, go on, let him go. Couple, son. Well, let him go. Let him go. Get him get a double portion. How many of you know it's all right to get a double portion? This fellow here in his left eye, he never saw good at all. This is his mom right here, and he sees very well now. Left eye? The left eye. How bad was it, honey? The optician told me nine weeks ago that he's damaged. He cannot see with it anymore, but he read with it this night. The, the optometrist, yes. the eye doctor, yes. said he would not see with that? With the left eye that is damaged. He would not see anymore. Yeah, he said he would not see with the left well, eye What is anymore. your name, sir? Rapture. Rapture. What happened to you tonight? Just, I, just I, could see through my eye again. You can see through your eye. <laughs> oh, praise God. Put, put your, take my handkerchief, cover up the eye that was good. All right. Now, come on, we're going to stand over here. Is it good and tight? Put your hand over his hand. Just push hard. Just make sure it's good and tight. Now, look at Brother Stroll. Put your hand up in the air. Do this. Do this. Do this. 
Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. <laughs> oh, come on, church. Somebody shout in this building. Well, somebody, come on, say, to God be all the glory. God is no respecter of persons. We're going to go right back to Earl's court. We're going to rewind the clock a little bit, a little earlier in that service. This is the message that those people and 10,000 others heard. I want to encourage you, don't just hear it. I want to encourage you, let faith rise, believe it, and then don't just believe it, but release your faith and you just begin to believe God because we're going to come back, we're going to pray, we're going to agree with you, but you can share your praise reports, your prayer requests, what you know God is doing for you through the message today in the comments section. We'll be back with you in just a moment, but I want you to give honor to whom honor is due. You're about to hear one of the most season shifting faith-building words that you will ever hear. I want you to join me in welcoming God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. I'm going to read tonight one of the greatest miracle stories that ever took place in the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And when we are finished in this building tonight, you are going to know how. Not through any secret formula, not through any special cliche of man or slogan of man's wisdom. But you are going to know tonight how to make possible your impossibilities. Oh, come on, don't, don't patty cake the Lord. Go on, give him a good clap offering. He is worthy. Found in the Gospel of St. Mark, the fifth chapter and the 25th verse. A certain woman. Now, this is one of the greatest miracles that Jesus ever performed. A certain woman which had an issue of blood. Look up here for a moment. If this woman were alive today, we probably would call her one that perhaps had cancer, an issue of blood. She had suffered it for 12 years, 26 verse, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will anoint your eyes. When every one of you in those wheelchair sections looking up here at Mars, I want you to hear, don't be turning around talking. 
Do you hear me? Do not be turning around talking. You're going to get something from God. Listen to this word. Get ready. I'm expecting an awesome move for cripples. I'm talking to you, yes. I'm expecting an awesome move for cripples in this building tonight. Now listen to the word. When she heard, watch this scene take place. Somebody stretch your hand out to the Father. Stretch it out to God. Look up here. Say it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. Watch her. And she touched his garment. For she said, listen carefully, she had predetermined, she had made up her mind based on something which we will discover in just a moment, that if I can touch just the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body she was healed. Jesus, knowing virtue, went out of him, turned and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, don't you see the great multitude on this street pressing everywhere? And you say, who touched me? And then he looked round about to see the little woman that had done this thing. And the woman fearing and trembling because of what was done in her, what she felt in her body, fell down before him. Jesus said to the woman, Daughter, listen to this. Fix your eyes up here. No time to count light bulbs here. Daughter, thy Faith hath made thee whole. Somebody stretch your hand out. Say it. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Jesus said to this woman, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy play. Before we go one step further tonight, look up here at Mars. Put your Bibles down, close them. Open your spirit. Open your spirit. This building tonight is filled with people 
that are facing spiritual and physical impossibility. You have come to the end of your rope in the natural, and there is no place to turn. It's exactly like this woman in the Bible. For 12 years, she suffered with this issue of blood. She spent every penny she had on doctors, every penny she had on medicine. And I want to say one thing here tonight in the mission to London. We are not religious quacks. We are not crystal ball gazers. We are not palm readers. We are not faith healers. We believe in medical science and we thank God for good, honest doctors. And I had to put those qualifications on there. You don't have to say amen, just say ouch. Good, honest doctors who try to do their best to alleviate the suffering of people, but how many of you know they're just human beings and they're very limited? How many of you know as wonderful as medicine is? Listen to me. Hold on to every word. As wonderful as medicine is, how many of you know Medicine is limited. Now, what do you do? What do you do when you've gone to the doctors? When you've turned to everything that you know how to do for yourself. And you're like this woman. You have to go home. And there's no hope. There's no hope for the cancer. There's no hope for the sugar diabetes. There's no hope for the high blood pressure. There's no hope for the accidents or the strokes or the conditions that have paralyzed our physical body. What do you do? She had spent everything she had. She tried everything that she knew. Now I tell you tonight, beloved, listen to God's servant and listen to the voice of God in this building tonight. I tell you in Jesus' wonderful, mighty name, what is impossible with man is possible with God. John, please take care of this man here. I'm going to say it again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke 1 tells us, 37, with God all things are possible. Do not have to go home and die. 
You do not have to go home from this meeting tonight the same way that you came here. Don't look down. Don't listen to what man tells you. I don't care what your problem or what your need is, whether it is spiritual or whether it is physical. Don't look down, look up. Church, listen to me. What is impossible with man is possible with God. God has not left his throne. God is still on his throne. I want you to notice as we journey with this woman for about 10 minutes before we begin the miracle prayers in this building tonight. First thing that happened to her, open your spirit wide. She came to the end of herself. Can you come to that place in God tonight? Someone said to me, Morris, this is not the day of miracles. I am happy to be confined in my wheelchair or to have my sugar diabetes or to have my physical problems. May I tell you something tonight? Under the awesome anointing of the power of God that's in this building like liquid fire flowing right by your side, the Spirit of God, which is everywhere present. May I tell you this? We don't worship days. We don't worship the New Testament beginnings where we read about the wonderful miracles. We don't worship the Old Testament days where we read about Jehovah God who opened the Red Sea, who swallowed the walls of Jericho who walked into the fierce, fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We don't worship days. Days, dispensations have nothing to do with the fact that what you and I worship is not a period of time. Are you getting that? That means you may have to come to the end of some of the things that you've been taught in your church. You may have to come to the end of self. Your pride. Except a corn of wheat, it is written, fall into the ground and die. It abides alone. Are you willing to humble yourself in God's presence tonight? Are you willing to die? There's a lot more to this woman's sickness than what you read on the surface of the scripture. 
You have to go deep into the story. This woman was an outcast. Did you know that this woman was divorced by her husband? Because she had this sickness under the Levitical law, he had a right to put her out, and he put her out. Did you know she could not go to church like you come to this meeting tonight and worship God? She was forbidden entrance into the synagogue. She was segregated. She was forbidden to touch anybody. She came to the end of herself. It seems like when you come to that place where you're willing to die, you get to the place you're willing to surrender everything to God. And you say, I don't care what people say. I'm going to press through. I'm going to get through. I'm going to touch God. I'm going to get what God has for me. I don't care what anybody says. She heard a message. Watch her. She quickly journeys towards this incredible miracle. She heard a message. Now, what was the message? Going down the street corner, no hope, no help, no place to turn, no money, segregated, an out cast, she heard a message. It was the greatest message in all the world. She heard about Jesus. May I tell you something tonight in Jesus' name? Please don't put your eye on the messenger because this man up here, whether he is stocky or whether he is thin or whoever he is or whatever he does, this messenger is not important. What is important is the message, and we pray the messenger be hid behind the message. She heard of Jesus. What did she hear? Great crowd pressing all over the street, saying, there he goes. She said, there goes who? Somebody says, that's him. She says, that's who? Somebody said, haven't you heard? There's a man here called Jesus. He claims to be the Son of God. He is opening the eyes of the blind. He is unstopping the ears of the deaf. He is causing the cripples to walk. The dead are being raised. She heard the message of hope. I tell you, in this building tonight, that is what this mission to London is all about. It is about the message of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son into this world for a divine purpose. It is written, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy. He might destroy the works of the devil. That's why God sent Jesus here.
This is the message. It's the message that the psalmist gave us in the 103rd Psalm when he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of God's benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. This is the message, beloved. She heard the message of Exodus when God spoke to the children of Israel and God said, if you obey me, if you walk before me, if you do that which is right, he said, not one disease that I put upon the Egyptians will I ever allow to come upon you. Why? Because I am the Lord thy God who healeth thee. Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? Are you getting the message? It's the message that Isaiah wrote to us about in the 53rd chapter when he said, who believes our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground and he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that man should desire him but he was wounded here's the message beloved look at around the street corner don't have to go home and die don't have to be an outcast anymore don't have to carry your issue of blood there's somebody in the midst of the crowd who has come here sent by god oh hallelujah come on are you ready are you ready are you ready are you ready to receive the message for your stomach infirmities for your blind eyes for your crippled arms for your crippled legs for your crippled soul he was wounded this is the message this is the message he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity this is the message. Are you hearing the message? The message is that 2,000 years ago, God sent his son into this world to pay the price. To redeem you. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. This is the message. Everything that we suffer, sin, everything that we suffer physically, this is the message. God sent Jesus Christ here to carry that load, to buried in his own body. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him. It was all put on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Oh, come on, put your hand up and wave it. We're healed. We're healed. We're healed. Can you take the message? Can you take the message? Come on. Can you take the message? First Peter 2, 24, this is the message. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. This is the message, that we being dead in trespasses and sins might be alive unto righteousness, by whose stripes we 
were, say were. Isaiah looked forward and said are. Peter looked back and said were. Everybody say were. Everybody say Everybody say, say it's done. It's done. It's done. The work is finished. The price is paid. The work of the enemy is destroyed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 21. This is the message. She heard a message. The Bible says she heard about Jesus. Second Corinthians 5, 21. This is the message. He who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. This is the message. She heard the message. And lastly, watch what happened. She believed the message. How many of you believe God's word tonight? Do you really? Come on, do you really? Do you really? Do you really? Do you really? But you have two choices. You have two choices. Go home and die. Go home and stay in your sin. Go home and continue to carry your sicknesses and your infirmities. Or you have a choice to Look at Jesus, look at the finished work, and say like this woman with the issue of blood, I'm going to press through, and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. I'm going to begin to pray healing prayers, Miracle prayers in just a moment in this building. There's an awesome anointing of the power of God here in this building tonight. Faith, beloved, is a fact, but faith. is an act. You don't have to bear two things ever again. You don't have to carry your load of sin. He who knew no sin became sin for you. You don't have to go out here tonight and lay your head down on your pillow without having the peace of Almighty God. You don't have to carry your load of sin one moment longer. Are you ready to give up that heavy load?
second, you don't have to carry that load of sickness. You say, Morris, how am I going to get rid of it? Faith is a fact, but faith is an act. We get rid of our sins by seeing and believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he paid the price for our forgiveness of our sins and we go to him on the cross and we give him our sins and he takes them and we walk away and we confess we are no longer sinners but we are children of the living God. Somebody say, faith is a fact. Faith is a but faith is an act. Faith is Tonight, we're going to begin the miracle prayers in just a few moments. Are you ready to receive your miracle tonight? Somebody raise your hand and say, faith, faith. cometh by hearing hearing by the Word of God. Tonight, I have heard the Word. I have faith in my heart. And I am going to act on my faith. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We see the finished work of Jesus. We hear the message. By Somebody say faith is a fact, but faith is an act. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to release your faith right now. I want you just to lift your hands in the presence of God. There is a healing anointing. There is a peace of God that is going to overwhelm your life. This is Miracle Friday on Live from Legacy. Number one, we're going to believe God. I believe if you are watching this right now, you're not watching it by accident. You stay with me for the next few moments. These could be the most important few moments of your entire life. You are not watching today. The Lord told me to tell you, he has a greater love for you than you could ever imagine. And God said to tell you that he sees something greater in you than you see in yourself. He sees something greater for you than you see for yourself. But there is something that God is breaking off of your life today. There is a habit, there is a fear, there is a condemnation that the enemy has tried to bring against you. There is a lie that has once again and again and again tried to rear its ugly words in your face. The Lord said to tell you that this is your day to be free. This is your day to receive the greatest miracle in all the world. All I want you to do right now is just say these words. Say, Father, thank you that I am not watching this today by accident. Thank you, God, that you sent your servant, Morris Cirillo, by Facebook today to remind me that you are for me and you are not against me. Father, I thank you today that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is upon me now and within me now. God, I ask that you would heal my soul. God, I ask that you would lift this heavy load, that you would lift and break this oppression off of my mind, off of my life. I see almost like a glass ceiling that the Lord is saying right now is about to be broken. You are about to step into a new season. You are about to step into your promotion. I declare it, your promotion is in motion without commotion today because of the power of the presence of God, the power of the blood of Jesus. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for healing my soul. Thank you for healing my mind. 
Thank you for ever living to make intercession for me. Thank you that you're praying for me right now. And now my brother, my sister, there's somebody right now, if you'll just put your hand wherever your pain is, I tell you that somebody is being healed. I've never called this in my life before. Somebody is being healed of tendonitis in your elbow. Somebody is being healed of arthritis, bone conditions are being healed right now. Stiffness in your joints are being healed right now. You don't even need me to call out. You just go ahead and put in the comments section, the thing that you are believing God, the thing that you are knowing that God is healing for you. I want you to use this comment section, just like the woman with the issue of blood, touch the hem of Jesus garment. Let this Facebook page, let this comment section literally be a point of contact for you to release your faith. And I declare in this Morris Cirillo Legacy Pavilion Theater, as I stand in the shadow of the legacy of Morris and Teresa Cirillo, as I stand under the double portion anointing today, that every weapon that has been formed against your physical body shall not prosper. Here's what the Lord told me to tell you. He said to tell you, you will not die, but you will live and declare the works of God. God is going to take this test and make it a testimony. He's gonna take this mess and make it a message. God is going to take, and this is the God that we serve. He's the God of the plot twist. He's the God that can take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around as only he can. And the Lord said right now, he is extending your life. He's strengthening your life. He's healing your life. All you need to do is just begin to praise him and just begin to thank him and just to begin to say, God, I receive it. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to declare it. I want you to share it in the comment section. I want you to tell Brother Cirillo what these Facebook Live messages mean to you. I want you to tell the Lord what his presence, what his power, what his promises mean to you and i want to encourage you today will be the last day to take advantage of the incredible free download the five most important things that brother Cirillo has learned that released the miracle working power of god in his own life in his own family and then through his ministry brother Cirillo shares incredible personal intimate stories of god working miracles in his life teresa's life their children's lives i love the chapters of this book i won't read you the book i promise you but i'm just taking time because i want to build your faith i want to encourage you don't miss an opportunity if the woman with the issue of blood would have just said oh, you know what i don't have time to press through this crowd i'm just going to stay where i'm at but you know what there's a different spirit inside of you that's why you're on this page you're not going to stay where you are. The Lord said that he is about to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you do not have room enough to contain. Chapter one, you were made for miracles. Somebody say, I was made for miracles. Chapter two, seeing God as he really is, not as we think he is, but seeing God as he really is. When we see God as, as he really is, we draw close to him because what we believe about God either attracts us to him or repels us from him. The enemy's job is to get us to see God in a way that he is not, in a muddy way, in an unclear way. But this book, the miracle book will help you. The word of God will help you. Being on Facebook Live with Mara Cirilla will help you to see God as he really is. One of the most important things in our life chapter three see your problems as miracle opportunities you don't have any problems all you need is faith in god somebody say amen and then i love this receive and realize that every promise of god contains the seed for your miracle that's right my brother that's right my sister the power of the word of God. Watch Brother Trillo's message from Monday this week. He talked about the healing power of the word of God. There is no greater investment that you or I can make in our life than spending time in the word of God. And then chapter 
Incredible secret number five, plant a miracle seed by acting on God's word. That's what Brother Strillo was telling us in the message. Faith is a fact, but it's also an act. Bringing of offerings is an act. Bringing of worship is an act. Doing the thing that we could not do if you're in a wheelchair. If you have pain in your body, begin to use that leg. Begin to use that arm. Begin to press through. Touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Well, I can't wait until Monday comes. We are beginning something very, 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 very special on Facebook Live. This has been in Brother Cirillo's heart. I'm going to announce it on Monday. We're going to shift gears, move into an incredible opportunity to, I believe, take our spiritual lives. We will not recognize ourselves at the end of next week. We're going to tap in. Somebody say, I'm going to tap in. We're going to tap in to one of the great season shifting secrets of Morris Cirillo's life. You do not want to miss it. I promise you, the script is going to flip next week. The enemy is going to be on the run next week. You invite somebody to watch live from Legacy with you. You that are in the San Diego area, you that are in the Los Angeles, Southern California area, or you that have faith to come from wherever you are. Legacy opens this weekend, and we would love to see you. There is no place like this place. The presence, the anointing, the glory of God, it literally is like a heavenly city. That's really all I can say. Legacy is like a heavenly city on earth. There are angels. I was praying this morning. The Lord said to me, Greg, he said, I have stationed angels all around this property. I believe it. I know it. I've experienced the presence, the power. Everybody that's been on this campus said there's just no place like it. So we'd love to see you if you're in the area. We can't wait for Monday. What an incredible week we're going to have on live from Legacy. We just want to tell you we love you today. On behalf of my beautiful wife, Jerry, on behalf of Morris, Teresa, our amazing team here at Legacy, you are going to meet some of the most precious, anointed, friendly, godly people that you will ever meet in your life when you come to this amazing Legacy Center. But on behalf of everyone here, to wherever you are right now, I just want to remind you that you are a great part of God's end time plan. And God hasn't changed his mind. God isn't taking his gifts from your life. He isn't taking his calling from your life. You are a part of God's end time plan. And God has not planned any defeats for you. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name on Live from Legacy.